Hello everybody, happy Saturday, day before Easter, if you're already in your Passover kind of celebration. Uh, I've been prepping pretty much all day uh, some of my Easter dinner uh, and dessert uh, dishes that I do every single year. I kind of only make this once a year, so it's fun for me to just do that because I don't really make these throughout the rest of the year. But anyway, I am working on my strawberry rhubarb pie. Now, my pie crust recipe I have already done. I've demoed uh, back maybe like March 18th. So uh, if you're interested in that recipe or how to put together a pie, roll things out, uh, check out those videos. So I already sort of prepped everything and I just want to talk really quickly about our filling. Um, now, if you think you don't like rhubarb, you probably just haven't had it because it's pretty good. Uh, and you can certainly make this with all strawberries uh, and you can leave the rhubarb out or if you can't find rhubarb at all, you can make it with all strawberries, that's fine. Uh, usually uh, in years past, we go to Fairway or Whole Foods and they have a stock uh, of rhubarb and I chop it up myself and put it in fresh. It's You chop it up like celery, it's just really, really tart um, is the only thing, but it sort of has that stringy consistency of celery but anyway thank you coronavirus there was no rhubarb at our market so what they did have was frozen which is perfectly fine it just takes a little bit of extra care so what i did was i thought this all came in a bag pre-chopped it's about a pound um i put it in my strainer over a bowl because you don't want to put froze it from frozen it in here because it is a much watery more watery product than fresh. So we have to strain this and thaw it out. And look how much liquid came out of this. And this would have been in our pie, but we don't want that. We want a nice tight filling that slices and stays with the pie um, instead of souping out all over the place. So anyway, this is completely thawed in a strainer. Um, I already have in this bowl four cups of strawberries that have been either halved, quartered if they're really large, or I just kept them whole if they were small. I lopped off the top and threw that away, chopped them up. I also have in here uh, one teaspoon of orange zest and a tablespoon or so of orange juice from that orange, as well as a half teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. So this smells really, really good with orange and vanilla and strawberry. So let's add our rhubarb to this and get rid of this liquid. So now in this bowl right here, I've already mixed up one cup of regular white sugar, uh, six tablespoons of cornstarch. And uh, my recipe says five or six. I'm choosing to use the max because what I said before, the frozen rhubarb tends to be a waterier product. Um, so I'm putting more cornstarch in to counteract that. Um, I also have in here an eighth of a teaspoon of fine table salt, as well as a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Now, the ground cinnamon is optional, but I like it. It does not make it taste like apple pie. Um, it doesn't even really, it's not a pronounced flavor, but it just kind of warms everything all up and gives it that little extra interest. The reason why I am not and have not added this and just dumped it into here and let it sit is because the minute you are going to add your sugar to fresh fruit, it will start releasing its juices like crazy. And what we don't want is that crazy, juicy, soupy pie. So I have already rolled out my bottom crust. I fit it into my pie plate already. This has been in the fridge. It's nice and chilly. I just want to call your attention to these nice streaks of butter in this gonna bake up really nice and flaky because of that. I also have on standby my top crust, already rolled, ready to go. So I like to get all assembled, get this ready. We're going to add, and by the way, I give this a whisk, you can do this with a fork, just to break up the cornstarch and make this a homogenous mixture for when we do add this in. So this is gonna go quickly. I'm going to, Sprinkle over 
all of this. And FYI, if you're not using rhubarb, use three quarter cups of sugar uh, because you need that extra quarter cup for the rhubarb since it is really, really tart and you won't need that all that sweetness for strawberries, which are naturally sweet. Anyway, I'm gonna gently toss this around so that just the fruit gets coated with the sugar, with the cornstarch. I want it to kind of all dissolve into a little bit of a syrupy liquid. Make sure you keep scraping from the bottom and fold over. Now, this is going to go directly into our prepared bottom crust. And it is fine to leave some liquid behind, but what you, you do want some of these juices because it is A, orange juice, but B, the cornstarch and sugar have now mixed with the berry juices and you will need that to thicken. Now I just want to spread this out into an even layer. You don't want to necessarily pack this in, but you do want to make sure that everything is evenly distributed, um, especially toward the outside of this. And it will naturally mound a little bit on the top and that's fine. Okay, now from here, we are going to dice up two tablespoons of unsalted butter into little cubes. You will dot them on the top of this. You will drape your top crust over here, trim it up, crimp it up, seal it up, and then we're gonna put this back into the refrigerator for maybe about 15 minutes to firm back up. After 15 minutes, we're gonna pull it back out. We will cut our slits in the top, we will brush it with our egg wash or cream, whatever you're using. And we are going to put it on a baking uh, tray that has been preheating along with the oven in the oven at 425. We're gonna take that hot tray out. We will put our pie onto that hot tray, put it into the oven for 425, 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we will turn it down to 375 and then cook it for another 30 to 40 minutes until the top is nicely browned and the filling is kind of bubbling out of the vents. This is how you know the cornstarch in this is activated. You have to kind of like see those bubbles. Now you're gonna be tempted after it's done to cut right into your hot pie. You cannot with this. You have to let it sit and cool down. This is not like warm apple pie, which is good fresh out of the oven. We have to let the juices tighten up in the filling. And so after three hours, it will be in good shape for you to slice. And then your filling will stay with your slices instead of running all over the bottom of the pie plate. Um, this is best enjoyed, I think, with vanilla ice cream or another ice cream of your choosing. So stay tuned. I will give you a final picture and I will post the recipe a little bit later tonight. Enjoy.